Hey folks, thought we'd get back out in the woods today and take a look at another important tree species for our honeybees. All the trees we've looked at so far in our trees and honeybee series have uh, been uh, minor sources, but uh, today we're going to look at one that's a, a major source, a significant source. Yellow poplar, or tulip poplar, more commonly known around here, also known as tulip tree. And I've got some good specimens I want, uh, want you to take a look at here. Here's a good size one that's based on the circumference. It's probably about 85 years old. Beautiful tree. Now you'll notice the growth habit of this tree. Very straight. That makes it an important timber source. Not so much because of uh, the quality of the wood, but because of its uh, because of the volume. It's used for pulp wood, plywood, stuff like that. Mainly uh, was an important tree for pioneers, for building cabins, uh, canoes. Matter of fact, Daniel Boone had a canoe made out of poplar. You can look around on the ground here and you can see the remnants of, uh, of the blooms. This one has recently bloomed. We've had some incredible windy days the last few days and it's blown a lot of these blooms out of the tree and here's one of the best ones I'm seeing here now. You can see how, how beautiful these are. They it looks like a tropical flower. And uh, if this had stayed on the tree, the center portion here would have ended up being the Samara. Uh, the seeds are, are single weed, single winged seeds and are very, very prolific uh, in the on the forest floor. They'll they'll last for four to seven years. It's really interesting. There's only about 10% viability in, in those seeds for some reason. But uh, a study that was done in 1966 in uh, 19 stands of yellow poplar in the Appalachians, it showed that uh, they would produce as many as a million and a half seeds. So that would give you 150,000 seeds that would be viable in a, in a one acre area. And uh, the uh, bark is, is very distinctive. You can see these darker ridges with the lighter gray furrows. Uh, the tree is self-pruning, which is uh, another thing that makes it desirable. A lot of times you won't see a single branch, like in this case, for 30, 40 feet up. Uh, the tulip poplar is the state tree of Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana. Uh, a real important tree for wild, several wildlife species. Uh, the white-tailed deer will, will browse on the young poplar trees during all seasons. It, it's good cover, good thermal cover, and, uh, and a good place for them to hide under. There, let's see, there's another, another example over here. It's pretty easy to spot these from a distance just because of their straight growth habit. And this time of year when you're in the woods, keep an eye out for morels, one of my favorite pastimes in the spring. When the soil temperature gets up to about 54 degrees at three to four inches deep, and after a little shower on a warm day, get out and, and look for some. In our area, we have pretty good luck under black cherry trees uh, and uh, sycamore trees. A lot of people report having good luck under tulip poplars, uh, cedars. Uh, of course, elm. elm trees are one of the best. We don't have a lot of those at this elevation in the sandy soil conditions we have. But hey, thank you all for watching. If you find these videos interesting, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. And, uh, and stay tuned. We'll, we'll be looking at more.
Okay, here we got one that's approximately 20 years old and it's still smooth. It hadn't formed the high ridges and furrows yet. You can see the color striations and just barely begin to feel what's ultimately going to be the ridges. Now this one, unlike the older specimen that we looked at, this one hasn't bloomed yet. You can see these buds on the end of the limbs here, several of those. So these are a couple, couple, well actually three right here, three or four right here together, all about the same age that will hopefully provide some good nectar for our bees. Now stay tuned, we're going to take a look at some even younger ones and kind of how they grow in, in, uh, in groups together. And again, they're prolific seed producers and they will quickly fill in an area that's, that's been cleared. Uh, the uh, tulip poplar is a state tree of Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana. And uh, it would be on a very short list of favorite trees of mine just due to its versatility. Uh, the, it, uh, it's, it's only a medium grade firewood, however, the kindling, you can make fantastic kindling from these, from these old limbs. See a grapevine there trying to grow up in this one I need to pull down. But y'all stay tuned, we're going to take a look at some more examples momentarily. Okay folks, here we're in a little stand of uh, yellow poplar trees that are really young, probably less than 20 years old. This is probably the oldest one in this little stand. And you can see the bark is still really smooth at this stage. Beautiful young trees. Again, they're very, very characteristic. You can see on this one here, the, uh, the, the lower limbs are already dying back and, and, and will eventually self prune. The trees put a lot of energy into growing tall as fast and straight as they can to reach the canopy to make them more competitive with the other species, which is why they are the tallest tree in the eastern, eastern woodlands of North America. But I really like seeing several poplars growing together like this. It's interesting, you'll, you'll see here of poplar groves in, the, in several areas around the, this part of the country, and, and that's exactly why. Very important tree species for a variety of wildlife, certainly our, our honeybees. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to look at several pictures of this tree in various stages of development. And, uh, and so st stick around. I appreciate you watching. Okay, folks, as promised, we're going to take a look at some pictures and, and discuss the tulip poplar tree just a little, in a little bit more detail. Tulip poplar, the genus species is Liriodendron tulipifera. Something I meant to show you when we were outside was, uh, was a close-up of the leaves. It's been said that, uh, that these leaves have the shape of a silhouette of a cat head. Um, it's also been said by some that uh, it looks kind of like the silhouette of a tulip, um, hence, hence the, uh, the name tulip poplar. The flowers also sort of resemble tulips a little bit as well. These, there's really no other leaf that looks quite like the tulip poplar leaf. The bark uh, has a, a little bit darker ridges and the gray furrows. Those uh, become more pronounced with age. Tulip poplars like to grow in stands. They're, they're very shade intolerant, uh, but they're really prolific seed producers. And when there's an open spot, they'll take advantage and, and, uh, and grow, germinate and grow really quickly. They, uh, they're generally the tallest tree in the eastern woodlands. They, uh, they grow they grow a little bit faster when they're competing with other species to, uh, to reach the sunlight quicker. They mature around 250 years, according to the uh, Department of Agriculture Forestry Division, with an average lifespan of 300 years. Depending on your latitude and your uh, elevation and weather variations, um, they'll bloom some, sometime between April and June. And generally, these blooms will be kind of high up in the tree. If you have an older or larger tree, and you might need binoculars to, uh, to, to see them. Tulip poplar nectar makes an excellent honey source. According to the USDA Division of Forestry, a 20-year-old 
tulip poplar tree can provide enough nectar to produce four pounds of honey. Pretty impressive, especially since these trees are so common. The, uh, the Samaras are an aggregate. Uh, late in the fall, whenever the blooms are withered away, you'll see what remains are these single weed, uh, single uh, winged seeds that uh, that are again, they're very prolific. They will they will survive on the forest floor for like four to seven years. And uh, from from uh, from studies, it indicates that uh, that only 10 percent of the seeds are viable. However, there's so many of them. I had mentioned a, um, a study that was done in in 1966 when we were out in the woods there. Uh, 19 stands of poplar, uh, yellow poplar trees or tulip poplar trees in the Appalachian region showed a million and a half seeds per acre on average. And so with, with 10 percent, you'd still get 150,000 seeds in that acre. So uh, it's it's no wonder we see so many of these trees. Uh, you'll see uh, a couple of different range maps on this. Now, these this one's probably a little bit older from uh, Elbert Little from the U.S. Geological Survey. And you, you can see what the range is here, the eastern U.S. But then but then we look at one that the NRCS has put out, and it shows um, and includes additional states, Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, um, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. The honeybee net forage map is, is really handy. If, if, uh, if you're not familiar with this, check it out. It's really easy to find online. And you can go in there, you can click on all the different bee forage regions are represented. And you can go and you can click on your, your particular region uh, to show what the, what the various sources are, the approximate uh, month that they'll bloom, um, the genus species name and so forth. And the ones that are highlighted are significant sources. And, and as I mentioned earlier, all the tree species we've looked at so far in our trees and honeybees series have been non-significant sources considered. However, uh, the tulip poplar is, is our first tree that's considered a significant source. It produces a bunch of nectar during, during good years, as long as those blooms don't get washed out by rain. Um, And so, again, this is just the looking at the Appalachian and Upland Ozark region, which is the region I live in. You can see all the different highlighted um, uh, sections here, the tulip poplar, black locust, basswood, aster and goldenrod are all considered significant sources for me. And then also uh, yellow clover, white clover also. The, uh, the flowers are, are incredibly beautiful, really, really unusual. Lots of different beautiful colors, orange, yellows, greens, chartreuse. You can see here uh, in, this, in this bottom picture, again, those blooms are, are pretty high up in the tree. When we look at uh, Frank Chapman's pellet book uh, from 1920, American Honey Plants, he added a section on the tulip poplar I thought was really interesting. I'm just going to read you just a little bit of this here. You can uh, you can get yourself a free copy of this and many other uh, beekeeping books that are in the public domain from Strathcona Beekeepers Library. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video as well as a link to the honeybee forage uh, map as well. But uh, the, what, what, he, what he had to say about tulip poplar was since it blooms so early in the spring, few colonies of bees are sufficiently strong to gather the crop possible from tulip poplar. The skilled beekeeper who can bring his colonies through the winter in good condition gets large yields of honey from this source. In the vicinity of Washington, D.C., it is the principal source of surplus and strong colonies often store an average of 100 pounds. In many cases, the bees build up on tulip poplar only to become strong after the flow is over. In locations where this tree is common, too much care cannot be taken to get strong colonies early in the spring to take advantage of this flow. So again, tulip poplar, very important, depending upon the, 
section of the country you live in, maybe you can um, have strong enough colonies to take full advantage of this, uh, of this amazing source. The fall color is a brilliant yellow, very, very beautiful, and hence the name yellow poplar. The uh, historically, the tulip poplar was was another tree that was used medicinally in the late 1800s. It was used as a diuretic, a tonic, and a stimulant. The bark is reported to contain tulipiferine. I may not be pronouncing that right, which is believed to exert powerful effects on the heart and nervous system. Tulip poplar is terrific. I, I thought this was a beautiful picture here showing. Uh, four or five honeybees taking advantage of the of this excellent nectar source. Uh, I, I so much appreciate y'all watching these videos. I would appreciate your feedback. Um, anything you think I could uh, could add to these videos to make them more informative and, and better for uh, for beekeepers or just tree lovers in general. Uh, so. Uh, but that's all for now, folks, and uh, stay tuned. We'll be taking a look at more trees in the future. May God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless your bees. <music>